The only thing more terrifying than a human is its pet. Written by General Leia. Perg and the ship's security squad ran down the corridor as fast as their appendages would take them. The ship's logistics specialist, Oxidize, had just returned from shore leave, unescorted. Perg was nauseous with terror. It had been his turn in the duty rotation to escort the human during shore leave. Things went well for the first few hours, until Oxidize had managed to evade him in a food market. Perk had stopped to purchase and eat a snack. One of the things that made humans difficult to escort is that they were able to eat while walking or engaging in other physical activities. When this was combined with a human's suicidal curiosity, it was a recipe for epic disaster. When Perg was going to face punishment from the ship's captain, he was going to request that he would be allowed to put a restraining harness on the human during future shore leave. Normally, speaking during punishment was a gross violation of protocol, but any given situation involving the human, even in a tertiary manner, seemed to create an exception to the rule. Perg had heard of one space station that allowed humans to carry weapons, because it had been determined that the human ability to weaponize anything, including eating utensils and flaws, made weapons restrictions for humans completely pointless. Perg and the security squad rounded the corner and saw the human about to enter his quarters. Oxidize! Halt! Remain still! Do not move! The human rolled his eyes as it turned towards Perg. Rusty, Perg. Why is it so difficult? Is there a single translator on the ship that can get my name right? Perg looked oxidized, Rusty, over, and noticed there was a suspicious moving bulge in the abdomen area of Rusty's coat. The ship's sensors had detected that Rusty brought an unauthorized life form aboard. Perg's level of terror increased from nausea to the risk of losing consciousness. The human had obviously been attacked by a parasite, which was no doubt feasting on Rusty's internal organs. Normally this would be a ridiculous assumption, but humans came from a Class 13 death world and could naturally produce restricted super-performance enhancement hormones at will. Perg had initially dismissed such rumours as stories to entertain offspring, until he had seen Rusty loading supplies on a frozen planet. It started by wearing an inadequate amount of cold weather clothing in below freezing temperatures. Rather than bring emergency medical supplies, Rusty had merely bought insulated beverage dispensers with hot beverages. As the day continued of loading the supplies, Rusty had built up enough of the performance hormones in his body to the point where he had stripped down to only one thin layer of clothing, not even cold weather gear. Perg, who was assigned to monitor the human that day, had inquired repeatedly about Rusty's safety with the very real threat of hypothermia. Rusty's reply shocked Perg, making Perg believe that he was having a psychotic or hallucinatory episode. Perg, it's it's okay, I just don't want to overheat. Sweating in weather like this is not a good idea. I promise, if I get cold, I'll put my coat back on. Besides... I'll be fine as long as I have uh, plenty of this. Rusty had patted the beverage dispensers. Perg sniffed the cup that Rusty was drinking from. Perg went from amazed to shocked. Rusty had mixed two poisonous beverages, hot caffeine and alcohol, and had been imbibing the noxious liquid all day. Between the hormones and beverage, Perg was certain that Rusty would collapse and probably perish at any given moment. But Rusty just continued to work. He seemed aware of his impending demise because he was playing loud music in a uniquely human genre that seemed to praise combat and violent death. The name of the genre was quite telling. Hard rock or heavy metal. Perg spent the rest of the day watching Rusty work, holding up his coat and awed that his human crewmate had bonded so strongly with the ship that he would sacrifice his life to ensure everyone had supplies. 
and the work was finally completed. Rusty took the coat from Perg, but rather than wear it, he casually draped it over one shoulder. Perg had notified the medical specialist to expect Rusty, who had been suffering from hypothermia, poisoning, and trauma-induced delusions. Rusty did visit the medical specialist briefly, requesting small bandages for flesh wounds he had acquired throughout the day, but had not noticed. Perg and the medical specialist expected Rusty to require several days of recovery. Instead, Rusty simply ate a larger-than-normal meal, which included a frozen lactose dessert. He complained about the cold outside the whole time he was eating the dessert, and then went to sleep early. The next morning, he did arrive thirty minutes late for his work shift. He apologised for sleeping excessively, and explained that he had also needed a large morning meal to replenish his energy for the day. He then proceeded to work as normal. The medical specialist checked in on Rusty, inquiring about his general condition and the wounds he had suffered. Rusty just laughed. (laughs) I forgot about that, Doc. Shows what a good night's sleep and a hot meal will do. I'm as right as rain now. As usual, the human statements made no sense, but as he didn't express any distress, the medical specialist went on his way. Back to the current crisis. Rusty, we are here to aid you. Ship sensors detected that a life form was present when you returned. Remain calm, and we will safely contain it. Rusty rolled his eyes. He began unzipping his coat. It's okay, it's, it's just a kitten. The ship's security crew had learned the phrase just a, when used by a human, could mean zero possibility of danger, or a situation of extreme danger. The security squad immediately readied defensive weapons. Rusty extracted a smallish creature from his coat. It began making noises and struggling. Rusty petted it and spoke reassuringly. The kitten continued to struggle, finally crawling up Rusty's arm and sitting on his shoulder. Berg spoke. I need to scan the creature as per life-form encounter safety regulations. Rusty knelt down so Perg could scan it. Perg asked, Do you know which uh, world is the natural habitat of this uh, creature? Rusty nodded. Yeah, it's from Earth, my world. This caused consternation among the security squad. Earth was a Class 13 death world, not just for the extreme climate, but for all the deadly animals whose sole purpose was to kill other animals, even if they had no intention of eating them. Even Earth herbivores were a source of mortal danger. Perg scanned the creature, his eyes widening. Rusty, you are mistaken. It is actually a cat. Oh no. It's this carnivorous and it has a documented 60% successful kill rate when hunting. Whoever sold you this animal was extremely untruthful. We must contain and expel this creature immediately. Rusty reached up and took the creature in his hands protectively. Guys, relax. It's no big deal. No big deal was another human saying that may convey complete safety or imminent danger. Kitten is what we call the offspring of cats. I know about their hunting. Humans use them for pest control, to hunt and kill unwanted rodents and insects. Don't worry, this little guy will earn his keep. Besides, look how cute he is. Perg marveled at the human psychological response. Humans found offspring of any life form, including dangerous ones, to be enjoyable. Perg waved the scanner at the cat. Uh, how big will this offspring get once fully mature? And how long does it take to reach maturity? Rusty replied. He's about eight weeks old now. Should be fully grown in two years. Even if he's a Maine Coon, he shouldn't get too big. Rusty indicated the area around his knee, which was mid-thigh to Perg. Perg flustered a moment, then regained his composure. Very well. I do need to report this to the captain. The medical specialist should also examine it. It has been assigned the designation ECA-1. Rusty spoke. Actually, I was going to name him Peanut Butter. Of course, peanuts were toxic to several humans, but humans who could eat them safely relished them in a variety of foods. 
in a human brain, it would make complete sense to name a carnivorous animal after a potentially deadly food. Very well. Its designation has been changed to peanut butter. What sort of equipment is required to contain this animal uh, safely? Rusty laughed. <laughs> Chill out. I'll find him something to eat in the mess hall, then a litter box. As far as contain it, good luck with that. It's, it's a cat. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Perg tried to hide his overwhelming panic. Don't worry, everything will be fine was the most not hazardous slash life-threatening statement a human could make. The only thing a human could say that involved a higher threat level was, oops. I need to report this to the captain and medical specialist immediately. Please ensure it doesn't kill crew members. Rusty laughed. <laughs> no promises. Perg scurried off with the frightened security squad. While protocol dictated that the security squad would usually stay to monitor the potential threat, there'd be very little, if anything, they could do that the human could not in regards to the animal. Indeed, leaving the security squad to monitor the animal would probably not result in greater ship safety, but avoidable injuries for the security squad. Perg was not looking forward to the meeting with the captain to explain the human's newest hazardous behaviour. The human was a very lucrative crew member, if one didn't mind spending their existence in constant mortal danger. And that brings us to the end of today's story. If you enjoy the stories we narrate and want to keep listening in, be sure to tap the birds to subscribe.